Marine Le Pen has declared that the European Union is turning out to be the major casualty of the coronavirus. And she's not alone. We're going to take a look at Marine Le Pen's prediction for the EU and why an increasing number of pundits are admitting that the globalist new world order that leaders like Merkel and Macron were envisioning has officially now come to an end. You're going to absolutely love it. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Wonderful to be with you as always. I hope you're all safe and sound. Before we get started, make sure to download your free gift. We put it together just for you. We're calling it our Fake News Antidote, which is a compilation of about 20 sites that I go to for my news each and every day for a nice study diet of conservative information. And you can download it completely free at the link down below in the pinned comment section. I think you're really going to enjoy that. And finally, let's give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video. Where are you? Where are you? And here it is. That's right. It is the Prepper's Peak new solar water heater. The solar water heater is an amazing device that allows you to heat and boil water outdoors using simply the sunlight. You can heat water in as little as 30 minutes and it'll work anywhere the sun shines. It's easy to clean and can be used anywhere there's sunlight. And the best part is that if you click on that link below, you get 15% off. So what can be better? Do not wait. Click on the link below before they sell out and get your own Patriot Sun Cooker today. All right, let's dive right in here. Marine Le Pen, the leader of the Nationalist Populist Party uh, National Rally in France, she's come out um, claiming that the European Union is indeed the major casualty, what she called the first victim of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, big picture, Le Pen is pointing out the obvious. The EU globalist project of a Europe without borders is dead. A Europe that transforms into a globalist superstate with its own army and with its uh, mandates imposed on member nations from a bunch of unelected bureaucrats in Brussels, that's over. Uh, it's done. Um, it's dead. Specifically, Le Pen is hammering the incompetence of the EU throughout the whole coronavirus epidemic, especially the statements made by the European Commission president that call for member states' borders to remain open even as up earlier this month. Mm -hmm. Le Pen is arguing that the commission president's call for open borders literally just a few weeks ago stems from the fact that Brussels has become a seedbed of radical globalist ideology. Free movement, in her words, has become a religion. Even death doesn't succeed in convincing EU leaders that it's obviously necessary for select periods for individual nations to close their respective borders to prevent people from regions disproportionately affected by the virus from coming in and spreading it. But that's exactly what happened in Europe. Now, while Le Pen is under no illusions that the bullies in Brussels will not have learned anything from this crisis, she said that member nations uh, themselves will therefore have to rise up and return to a far more nationalist populist vision of life for the foreseeable future. It is indeed the end of the new world order that Emmanuel Macron championed even before he could have started it. That's how Le Pen put it. Now, Le Pen's comments are coming on the heels of a number of articles that have come out of late on how the nationalist right politicians and political parties in Europe are, in fact, gaining significant support as a result of this virus. It's interesting because nationalist populists like Le Pen were some of the first to voice concerns about the possibility of a pandemic as early as the beginning of January. In fact, it now turns out that Macron's own former Minister of Health had warned him about the seriousness of the pandemic as early as January, but Macron, shall we say, brushed the warnings off. And so as Gavin Mortimer over at The Spectator has argued, Le Pen knows that this pandemic could indeed kill off Macron's hopes of re-election in 2022. The Yellow Vest protesters are being prevented from staging their mass demonstrations, and you could be sure that their anger will only fester and likely explode later on this year when France enters into a recession, as is predicted. Uh, remember, the fundamental rationale for the Macron presidency back in 2017, when he was originally elected, the whole of his candidacy was centered on the revitalization of France's economy. And that appears to have completely collapsed. And Le Pen knows it. And so we did a video a few days back on how badly Macron's government was being pushed to the breaking point over all this. So, for example, it's being reported that last week at Montpellier Airport, there were no arrival health controls 
at all. Uh, all they had were posters. <laughs> there were warnings posted all over the airport, but in terms of anyone there to subject arriving passengers to standard health checks like temperature and uh, fingerprint scans, nothing. People were just walking into France and no one has any idea their health status. But hey, they've got posters, right? And so all of this is to say that the Macron presidency may find itself to be but the latest victim of this virus, which, if Le Pen is right, would merely be symbolic, a microcosm of what's happening to the whole of the EU. Again, we have to remember, you know, what an absolute shock the Brexit vote was to the Eurocrats in Brussels. They, did, they simply didn't see it coming. They were like a bunch of ostriches with their heads in the bureaucratic and administrative sand. They had no idea what the vast majority of Brits were thinking and feeling. And one of the key reasons for this is because of the stunning contrast between the nation states of Europe and the bureaucrats in Brussels. And the argument here is that if you're a professional politician with any semblance of a democratic mandate, then you don't work in Brussels. You work in the context of the nation state that comprises the union. You're generally accountable to your voters. You have to produce results or you're voted out of office. But that's not Brussels. The bullies in Brussels are accountable to no one. They're generally not elected and thus they have no identifiable electorate. They're not in touch with the populations that they govern. And as a result, the EU is largely divorced from the need for realistic political representation. As one article put it, I think it was very brilliant, Brussels is basically the collective dustbin for the power seekers who've either been ejected by their own national electorates or who are simply unelectable. It's heaven for power wannabes unwilling to face the consequences of their actions. How's that for a lovely description? Brussels is the collective dustpin for power seekers who've either been rejected by their own national electorate or who are simply unelectable. And as a result, they've begun dictating to the real administrators, the real politicians, those who are accountable to their individual electorates, they begun dictating to them what they can or cannot do. So what that means is that a bureaucratic stasis or paralysis has spread throughout the EU's member states because because of the unelected, accountable, uh, unaccountable incompetence of the bullies in Brussels, bureaucratic stasis paralysis has spread throughout the EU's member states. And this is precisely what Brexit challenged and effectively exposed. The sentiments behind Brexit said, enough! The British people no longer want to be subject to this bureaucratic paralysis, this coronavirus pandemic appears to have exposed that paralysis like nothing else. And it may indeed be the moment the nationalist populists like Marine Le Pen have been waiting for. We have to see how it develops, of course, but it does appear to be a very real possibility that the single most significant victim of this pandemic that has so severely hit the European continent may be the European Union itself. Now, before you go, make sure to check out the video I just uploaded on the D-list entertainer, Kathy Griffin. You may remember her from that stunt she pulled holding the ISIS-inspired, decapitated head of President Trump. Well, she's at it again, but this time she fails even more miserably. It's going to make your day, so make sure to click on the link, and I'll see you over there. God bless.